Rub up your engines! Well, Nissan's signaling the end of Datsun cars. They got rid of the Datsun name in the United States decades ago, but they were still selling it around the world. Now they're getting rid of the name entirely. Now the Datsun name's been used for over a hundred years, but they phased it out in the United States in the 1980s. Now Nissan says they're going to sell the rest of the Datsun cars they have. But they're not going to throw in. They're going to service them for years, but they're not going to be making them anymore. But then again, what's in a name? Now you wonder what's the name Datsun? Well, it's an acronym of three Japanese names that were founders of the company. Den, Ayoyama, and Takeuchi, so Datsun. But it also means lightning fast in Japanese, and of course, they were the first ones to make those cool little sports cars. Those 240s were phenomenal cars. Before that, all sports cars didn't run good, broke all the time, leaked oil. These didn't, they got good gas mods and ran, and that started the Datsun Z family of cars, which of course were zippy little race cars that didn't break down much. Now, they were still selling Datsuns in Indonesia, India, but now they're not going to sell them at all. I don't know, everybody's always changing their names. To me, it's like this is just kind of insanity. People get too carried away in the name. You're driving a car. Do you really care what the name is? As long as it doesn't break, it doesn't fall apart. These corporate people, they're so wrapped up in their own BS that they think it means something. <laughs> The names mean nothing. There are names like Fram that used to make great products, and then they got bought out by people, and now they make crap products. They make filters that have one tenth the amount of filtration that they used to have, but since you can't see inside an oil filter, what the heck? You don't know what's going on inside there. Oh, it's a Fram. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you got to look at the product, you got to see what's out there. Who cares what it says on the outside? I had a customer that had a Mercedes, but it wasn't a big enough number, so she paid me to take the old number off. She bought the higher number at the dealer, and then I glued that on and everybody thought she had a fancier car than she did but she didn't because the name is just a name it doesn't mean anything Victor says I got a rough idle on my O2 Silverado 4.3 it stalled after a heavy load new plugs cable new injectors new fuel pump filter three has multiple misfires occasionally four and others no other codes help you said after a heavy load it stalled out you're probably starting to blow the head gasket those engines are notorious for blowing head gaskets as they age it's what 20 years old do my test how to tell if your head gasket is blown Scotty watch it on YouTube test it with the blue liquid it turns yellow you know your head gasket's blowing that's odds are what is happening to it now you change the injectors you did all kinds of other things so I'm sure that that's working okay the only other thing that occasionally can happen is sometimes the wiring for the fuel injector system goes bad then a couple will misfire because they don't fire right because the wiring harness is going bad for the injectors you might check that too but first do my see if your head gasket's blown and do a dry and wet compression test take the spark plugs out do a dry test on a wet and if you see the number three cylinders completely different pressures on the other yeah your engine's just flat worn out and you'd either need another one or rebuild yours and it's pretty expensive on that if you really want to keep the vehicle you're better getting a long block remanufactured engine put that in and messing with yours well you didn't say the mileage but I'm assuming you got pretty heavy miles on it. Elk Train says I got O2 Monte Carlo I replaced the evap canister and the line that runs to the purge on the evap is dripping fuel we unplugged a metal line from the fuel filter it says fuel vapor vent so should fuel be coming through there no it shouldn't one replace the fuel filter it's probably defective it's not supposed to let fuel go into the evap canister the evap canister does one thing it takes the evap gas gasoline vapor not liquid gasoline and then it filters it so that no hydrocarbons go into the atmosphere yours has got raw gas going and you got a problem in that system and it could be simple as the fuel filter's crappy it's not aftermarket chinese piece of crap that wasn't made right and it's letting fuel coming through only fumes are supposed to go through there not fuel so and you replace your canister it'll ruin the new one too obviously the gasoline ruined the old one and it'll ruin the new one first it's made for vapor not gas that's why you never top up cars anymore when the pump shuts off stop because if you keep topping it up then the evap tube will get raw gas in it sucked into the canister and end up ruining the thing so no you got to figure out why gas is going in that line start with another filter or something pray it's just a cheap Chinese made one that's not working right which I've seen many times Devin Canyon said I'm looking for a used electric car I'm looking at a 2013 Nissan Leaf with 60,000 miles or 2014 Ford Focus Electric with 71,000 miles. Out of these, which is a better buy? I'm leaning towards the Leaf. I definitely go toward the Leaf. Is better power, 
has a longer range. The Ford Focus Electric, they didn't sell that many of them. From my experience with Ford dealers, the guys there don't even know how to work on the things. And I've had customers with the Leafs that were totally happy with them. Not a pure electric fan at all, but if you want pure electric, definitely get the used Leaf. I've had customers do it, and they were pretty happy with the things. Flynn 1976 says, what about Volvo S60 engine quality? I'm looking for a reliable used car for a college student. Three to four years are going to last them. I'm considering a Volvo S60 with 90,000 miles, but I heard they had oil consumption. What do you think about it? They're excellent engines if you change the oil. The problem is there's a lot of idiots out there that don't change oil, and they'll change it every 10, 15,000 miles or even further down the line, and it wears the engines out. Volvo makes excellent engines. They always have. Now, they're known in the United States as European money pits because as they age, they cost a fortune to repair. Now, if it really only has 90,000 miles on it, it could be a decent used car. But you got to have a guy like me check it out because it's a European car. It could have money pits coming down the line. We can tell you in an hour with our fancy scan tools, is it worth it, is it not? Don't buy one just blindfolded. Oh yeah, it looks like a good car I'm going to buy. You got to have a mechanic check out any European car. Some of them can be okay at a certain price point with a certain mileage, but you can't ever gamble that, oh, it seems okay, I'll buy it. No, it's got to be checked out. They're very expensive to repair when they break. And those are good cars. They can last a long time. Be leery until a mechanic checks it out. There's too much stuff that's expensive that can go wrong that you're not going to know about until it's too late. Have it checked out before you buy. Marmos of War says, my car's nearly out of gas. It says two miles to empty and a gas station is 2.2 miles away. My car gets 27.6. Can I make it to the gas station? If not, can I put something else in it? Well, come on, you got a lawnmower? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't drive it low anyway. If I were you, give it a try. What the heck? But give it a try with an empty gas can in your trunk. So if you make it almost there, you can just walk to the gas station, fill that up, put it in and drive it and fill it up. It's not a good idea to run your car that low of gas anyways because there's some pumps. Crud can be on the bottom of your tank and when you get that low, the crud bounces around, gets sucked into the engine, clogs up the fuel injection system. Pretend a quarter tank is empty. Pretend that's E because if you do that like I do, I never have fuel related problems because if there's any crud in the gas tanks of my car, it stays there because it's covered with gasoline. You start getting that low, you're sloshing around, you can suck the crud in, you can destroy your car. So do that from now on. F artist says, I'm looking for a hard top convertible. I looked at plenty of G6, but they're gone. And it'd be nightmares to find a part. My dream car is a 2010 Lexus 250C, but it's beyond my budget. The 350C is even higher, so I've narrowed it down to an 07 Volkswagen EOS or a Toyota Solera, which is a cloth top. What's your opinion? Well, I gotta agree. I like metal tops because they're quieter, safer, right? But yeah, they are a pain in the butt when they break, and they break, they do. They break all the time, especially Mercedes. Now, the Lexus ones don't generally break, but you said that's beyond your price range. I would say get a Solera. So what? It's a cloth top, and if it's bad, put a new cloth top on and it'll last for years and years and years. The Soleras are great cars. They can run a really long time. Yeah, they don't make them anymore. They don't make them anymore because it was a marketing flaw mistake by Toyota. They already have something in that range. Why did they put another one in the range? I don't know. You know, and Toyota was never into convertibles either. So that was really the only real convertible that Toyota ever made. Lexus is, yeah, but Toyota, you know, they were that was the only one. So they just said, we're not going to make them anymore. Well, we all know Toyota's going to last forever. Well, Toyota's going to help you out now. They have come up with a new paint removal technology to dress up cars that they can strip the paint off of your old car and repaint it. The company's called Kinto. It's a Toyota owned company in Japan. They have over a hundred different colors you can paint it in. And if you don't like it when you're done a year or two or what late, they can strip it off and go back to the original paint. I should say last so long, maybe you're tired of the color of your car, change the color of your car. Not a bad idea. And this isn't just, you know, that plastic wrap. This is actual painting. Now it doesn't do like the old strippers do, all kinds of deadly chemicals. This is water stripping with high pressure. Now in Japan, the average length of car ownership is 14 years, so why not paint your car a different color if you're tired of the color of it. They got them looking brand new. I mean, only Toyota to come up with this idea. Somehow high pressure water spray takes the old stuff off, coating, and then you paint it. And since they say you can go back to your old color by taking it off, they're obviously stripping off the clear coat, getting down to the base coat and then painting over that because the base coat is still going to be there. Pretty interesting technology. Hey, why buy another car if yours is going okay? Maybe it looks a little ragged. Well, what the heck? Paint it a different color. And like I say, this isn't wrapping 
that if you've ever seen a car wrapped they can look beautiful but then the plastic starts fading and it doesn't last this is actual paint that they're going to be doing see because all the car companies are getting into water-based paints anyway so you can strip them off and put them on a lot easier than the oil-based ones you couldn't have got the oil-based ones off with you know high pressure wash you can only get water-based paint off that way so a pretty interesting idea so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell